Hey guys, it's Pedro back with another interview covering Valorant Champions 2024. For this occasion, I'm here accompanied by kicks of Team Vitality who are coming off of a loss to Leviathan in the end of their group stage run to thus get eliminated from said competition. So, um, as I said just now, getting eliminated uh, at the hands of Leviathan. Uh, I want to ask you the, the obvious opener question. Um, how are you feeling at this moment in time? Yeah, I mean, obviously it sucks to lose, yeah. Everyone's going to say the same thing. Uh, especially when uh felt like the game was in our hands, at least in map one. Like, they picked Icebox, their best map, and we've been, we've been historically good on it. And we had a kind of a slow start on Icebox, but we brought it back. And, uh, like, towards the end of the game, like, right before overtime, like, we had these rounds to close the game. Like, we had advantages or clutch situations that uh, just didn't go our way. And I mean, after that, it was like really hard to bounce back, to be honest, like uh, on Sunset as well. Like once we lost the first map and they had like a really momentum heavy comp and they kept like running at us, we didn't really have the right answers. And then we were still trying to like, you know, keep going and keep the energy up. But uh, yeah, like it's just really hard after uh, losing a map on like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to ask you about what the game plan was like for you guys ahead of this encounter. You know, of course, you know, playing on the ice box and just being in a position. Sorry about that. Being in a position to, you know, actually take the map um, at one point, especially at the very end. Obviously, it didn't go that it, it didn't go your way. But still, you know, the fact that you guys were able to be in that position says, says a lot about um, the preparation, how you guys were pr approaching it. So that said. What was the what was the game plan for you guys against Leviathan in in Icebox? Um, I mean, for our attack, we didn't really change anything. Like we have a consistently strong attack side on the map. Like we can rely on it. We didn't really have to prep anything for that. Just some micro things, and that was all. And for defense, we had a good understanding, at least we thought, on uh, how they play, like how they default A, especially. And we had our own set ideas to counter that. But then. In the actual game, like it was different to what they were doing. Like they were just putting five people behind their A default and just instantly executing, like uh, which is something they had done before, but not to this extent that they just keep doing it almost every single round and kind of caught us off guard. Off guard, like we thought, okay, well this time it's gonna be the normal default. This is how we approach. Like this is how we fight back. This is how we set up, and then they instantly just execute and just they did the same thing like so many times and. We were kind of like in a chaotic situation, but we still managed to pull through, to be honest. Like, we were in pretty bad situations. Like, if you look back, the rounds, how we were set up and how we were fighting was not the best. And we were still getting rounds, like, on A. And, like, uh, uh, it just came down to, like I said before, the, the situations where we had advantages or where we had, like, clutch situa situations that it really came down to why we lost. Yeah, and, um, you know... I would imagine that uh, uh, it'd be tough for you guys to kind of try to regroup and rebound uh, after a map like Icebox heading over to Sunset. And so I ask you, what was uh, the, the 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 team's mentality, like communication, like you know when you guys were coming off of Icebox and just having to huddle back together on um, focusing on Sunset? What was that process like for you in between those two maps? Uh. Yeah, I mean, like in between the maps, like we were obviously a bit frustrated, all of us, like that uh, we had the chance to close it out and we didn't. And that definitely mentally affected us, like uh, the fact that we had it and we didn't close it out. And then going into Sunset with that mental block still in our head, like we tried to go past it and we were like, you know, like we started off normal, like we always do, but like I feel like there was still like this little thing in everyone's head that like, ah, you know, like we're mm -hmm. uh, we're on the we're going downhill right now. Like we're on the back foot. Like we can't get away back. And then yeah, like they're like I said before, their comp on sunset is like uh, when they started gaining momentum. Like it was really hard to bounce back. Like they were not giving us space to breathe. And as much as we were trying to, you know, move past that and like you know let's start from this round and let's take it round by round. Like it was really hard. Like every round felt like we were too slow to react. And at the same time, they had the right answers and people were also hitting shots. Like I was getting demolished on sunset to be honest and. Yeah, like uh, the more rounds went on, the harder it was for us to actually do anything, to be honest. In a lot of ways, um, the map was kind of, the series was kind of decided on Icebox. Do you kind of feel that way now 
as you look back on on how a the entire series transpired? Yeah, uh, I mean this is probably the biggest reason to why we lost because looking back at how we played in EMEA in Split Two, like we had almost every series that we played, we lost the map. I think there was only one game that we won that was 2-0. And other than that, there was countless games where we lost the first map or lost the second map and we still had to bounce back. And this is the characteristic that we just completely lack today, that we did not have the ability to bounce back whatsoever. And like, yeah, like I said, the mental block from Icebox was obviously there. And then, yeah, we kind of just handed the game to them on Sunset. I want to ask you now all over on, on Sunset now. You mentioned about um, how Libit then was uh, playing in a very momentum um, heavy kind of composition and obviously that kind of played out the way it did uh, in that map. Exactly. I want you to kind of elaborate on exactly how um, Libit then kind of played it in a way where kind of overwhelmed you guys uh, uh, in, in that second map. Um, I mean, we had a understanding on how they play like once again we had to prep and uh, things didn't kind of plan out as we thought they would like they were fighting areas that we didn't always expect them to fight according to the prep and then we kind of after like four rounds we took a timeout and we said okay let's just go back to what we do like uh, forget about the prep you know we can have it in mind but let's just play our actual game plan and then and that's at the same time they switched to just playing like really aggressive like doing set rounds where they insta push down, they use ultimates on us, and we lose a man almost every single time. And then, yeah, like they were always fighting for our space really hard, and it was like, uh, we didn't really have the answer to it. And uh, then we like keep trying to play our own game, and then like we're going into a site, and there are five people running at us, they're throwing flashes, they're throwing everything. Like uh, they were just winning all these fights because they had the right answers, and like the, the, uh, like, the time it took for us to react to these things was always too slow. Like we were always on the back foot. Yeah, for sure. And obviously that led to um, the team's loss and elimination from the competition. But now I kind of want to ask about your reflection on the tournament. You have some good moments here and there in, in, in this champions debuting on the international stage, pulling off that 6K um, ace. Uh, 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 in one of the matches, um, just how do you kind of look back on your time in Seoul and just having to compete against the best teams in the world, including uh, today, Libya? I'm sure you guys lost, but I um, still want to ask you about how you reflect on that. Yeah, I mean, going into the tournament, you know, like uh, I wouldn't say I was nervous, but like there was obviously some like uh, thoughts in my head on how I'm going to perform and like how everything is going to you know, like plan out and how things are going to go. And I'd say that kind of affected me in the first game. Like I wasn't there as a, as I usually am. Like I wasn't a hundred percent of myself in the game. And uh, to be fair, we weren't as a team as well. Like we lost as a team on the chase game in the first one. And then uh, after that game, I had some time to reflect on what I did wrong and uh, what I can help, like what I can do to help the team. And I'd say that the last two games now against Talon and Leviathan, I definitely had a better showing for myself and I'm pretty happy with the development uh, that I had throughout this term. I mean throughout the whole year but also in this uh, just in these two weeks like I had time to grow like and uh, how do I approach like international tournaments for myself and um, yeah what is the um, no overall year what is we feel is going to be the the number one memory that you will kind of Look back, not look back on most fondly. Uh, this entire year is something that that happened in in Champions or somewhere during the season beforehand. What what do you think is is the number one memory for you this year? I mean, I'm a few. Sure, go ahead. I mean, for me, there's three that instantly came to mind. I mean, obviously, the six k is uh, okay. <laughs> considering the fact that I've never aced before, and then to do a six k, which there's only been like two or three in international events. You know, it it feels nice. Uh, then the game that we qualified to champs for against Heretics where we had a 12-6 lead on bind and then we gave them six rounds and we had to win it in overtime and that was like the the craziest game I've ever played I think like it was so back and forth and it was like so chaotic and we were all emotional in the game but we kept it together and probably the most wholesome moment of the year was when we came back 11-3 against BBL in uh, split two and uh 
like you know we had stuff going on as well outside the game with safe having uh, personal issues outside the game and then like when he ended the game with an ace like uh, mm. and we finished the comeback from 11-3 like that was probably the best like feeling like I had goosebumps for the rest of the night to be honest like it was an incredible moment for sure yeah the team definitely played it and gave some very brilliant moments during the year yourself included you, you definitely showed as one of the most promising talents in emea and thank you so much kicks for making this interview happen I'm, I'm sorry about the loss but still hopefully you're able to take this moving forward for next year so that's it thank you so much and best of luck for next year thank you very much thank you so much thank you